Welcome on back guys, GTS Garage. Today we're going to look at the art of electrics and electricery. Um, I am not a qualified electrician, but as a hobbyist I am wiring in a number of lights to the project bike. So I thought it probably worthwhile just going through and showing you how I do it. I'm not saying how I do it is the absolute best way. And there will be professionals out there that will be able to show you a lot better than I can. But given the fact that I'm going to wire in four or five of these lights, I thought I would show you. Um, so basically, this is the light I'm looking at. So as you can see, it's a normal three prong. It takes a ground lead, a live lead, and a, a, le a light lead. So there are three. It also has a small LED in there that makes that light up at the same time as whatever it is activating lights up. So I'm going to take you along for one or two of these so I can just show you how I do it. Other than the switch that I'm going to be using today, I'm also going to be using these. Now this is a Wago connector and you can get them in two, threes, fours or fives. I think five is the biggest they do, but it's a great way of proving your electrics work prior to getting your solder and gun out. If you get your solder gun out, you end up breaking connectors, wasting a lot of uh, money because some of these connectors are quite expensive. So I just either use the old electric blocks or I'll use these. Now these are quite new so I thought I'd give these a go. And the good thing I like about them they are they're fairly simple you just connect the wire up so these flip up so you can see let me just put one up I don't know why I'm struggling there you go so basically they basically come up you slurp, you insert your wires and then you just clip them down and that makes a solid connection. The other good thing is you can put your tester down the hole and it'll tell you if you've got a live circuit in there. So you don't need to take um, each of the connectors out to test that. You can just put your connector tester in there and that will tell you. On the back of these things, which is quite useful, it'll also tell you boom, 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 the length of wire that you need to strip. So it's got a kind of a, a measuring guide on the back there. So the first thing, guys, you are going to need is a, a live connection. So this is either going to go to your battery, which is quite a shoddy way of doing it, or you splice it from a live or a switched live so you know something like um, when you turn the bike on with a key this would become live when the key is not turned on this is dead so that's the kind of connection ideally you want but some people just plug it straight into the the battery the bad side about plugging it directly into the battery is the fact that if it is switched on and you leave it alone or you walk away something that's not so evident maybe some heated grips your battery is going to be dead by the time you come back to the bike so this is my live and I'm going to plug it in the first port of this block. So if I now come into there, and all I've got to do, so I know I know it's the right length because I've already measured it. And then I am going to put that into the first one, seat at home and close it. And that is nice and secure. That's not going anywhere. So the next thing I'm going to need is a ground. Now, I'm, once again, I'm going to use a Wago connector. And the reason is, is there are going to be multiples of these ground points. So the lights need a ground, the light themselves need a ground, but also the switch needs a ground. So I'm going to need to create that kind of circuit without having you know, double the amount of wires going around the bike. Now, a ground can come from many points. So there are many mount points on your bike. On this one, there are two, mount, there are two ground points on where the relays are, so the, uh, the starter motor solenoid is, is normally at a ground point, so I could use that. There's one on top of the starter motor. There's also one um, by the coils. Or you could actually tap into a ground wire so that. There are many ways to do it, but this is my ground wire, and I'm going to put it in the first slot of my Wago connector. As soon as I can lift the thing up, there we go. So I'll just tighten that up a little bit more. Again, not using solder at this stage, guys, because all I'm doing is proving that the circuit works. So that's the first one in there. So I have one power and I have one ground, if I can keep them on. Okay, so one ground, one thing. Now I take an electrical connector. So the electrical connector is split into three. So I need a cable that goes into the ground. So I'm going to run a wire from this one to my ground way go. And I've got a uh, power, so I'm going to run the power to my live 
uh, Wago connector and then I have a blue one in the middle which says lights. So that is the one that connects directly to the spotlight. So this is an easier spotlight from the uh, from eBay and we will now wire this in using those connectors and that switch. So the first thing we're going to do is connect the ground both to the switch and to the light. And the way we do this, and I'll, I'm going to show you this connector now, but at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to make that connector. Okay, so nice and simple, not a problem, just a bit of heat shrink and a connector and a tool. That's all you need to make those. And I'll, I'll make one of these at the end. So the basic, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a connected wire, which I'll show you how to do it at the end. And I'm going to plug it into the ground point on the switch which is this far one, and that is the symbol for it. I'm hoping you can see that. So that goes into there, and it has a bare wire, which we've not done anything with yet. So we're going to lay that one down without it dropping on the floor. The second thing we're going to need is a second strip of wire, which is there. So the first thing we're going to do is take the wire that comes from the switch, and we're going to squeeze them together. So we're going to squeeze the wire that comes from the switch and that separate piece of wire. I hope that makes sense. So we are going to take the switch wire and the wire from the secondary cable. So there's the two and there's the other two ends. Makes sense? Good. We're going to take those and we are going to wrap those around each other. Okay. And we are then going to take the the connector we're going to undo the ground side the black side we're going to take the ground connector out we're going to take that undo that screw be careful that the screw doesn't come out with any magnetic tools you have and drop on the ground because you will never find it again and we are going to push those hang on a second let me just squeeze them in a little bit tighter than they are at the moment I'm using 17 amp things, so it does tend to be a little bit tight in there, but they will go. So that kind of gets in there, get the casing in, squeeze it in. There you go, that's all in. And I'm now going to close that up. So that's made that connection. Okay. So, let me just quickly put that in my pocket so it doesn't go out of the picture. So basically we have a wire, we have the black wire that comes from the light goes into the connector. On the other side out of there we have now a wire that is just waiting to have something done with it. And we have the wire that goes into the ground connector on our switch. I hope that makes sense. So we have a block connector coming from the light. On the black side, on the black wire side, we have two wires coming out of that block connector. One goes to the switch, the ground on the switch, and the other one here is waiting to be terminated. That is going to go on our ground Wago connector. Make sense? That is going to go on the ground Wago connector. So this, so the only other connection that goes into that Wago connector is to a ground point on the frame. This is the second cable that goes into there. So that is now our light and our switch is grounded. We're then going to take a live. We're then going to take a live connector again i'm going to show you how to create one of these and we are going to plug that in to the live side of the switch which is the plus there and we are going to connect that to the live wago connector does that make sense That's going to go into the live Wago connector. Okay, so that that switch now has a ground and it has a live. 
It also has a mind of its own because it wants to go where it wants to go. So we have our ground, we have our live, and we have our switch. So the only thing that needs to happen now is to connect the live side of the light. Remember there are two wires that come from the lamp or the light. So the black one's connected to the ground, the ground is connected to the switch. This one is now going to have a separate line. Now for this colour I'm going to use blue, or I have used blue. Okay, so again I've got a connector on one side and just a piece of wire on the other. So I'm going to connect the blue connector to the light. So that is the only one that's available now. So that goes into the blue, squashes in through the middle. That's it. And that is going to go, I'm going to take the other side of this, and that is going to plug into the red side of the light, the lamp, the LED spotlight, whatever you have, that is going to go into the red cable. And it's going to connect to the red side of that cable. So, obviously I haven't undone it enough for that to... Again, if you've got a magnetic tool, make sure you don't drag that screw out. Because if you do, you'll never find it again. So, if I now tighten that up, Right, so we have power, we have the ground, and we have the connection to the lights. So if I now click that, I'll open that up, I'm hoping this works. If I now take the switch, which is all thing, and go, it is now on. Okay, and the little light switch, so there's a little LED in there as well, so I can turn that off. So that is now, we know those connections now work. So that's basically how you would mount an additional spotlight at the front of your bike. So that's basically one spotlight. So how does this change from two, one spotlight to two spotlights? Okay, so we're going to start again working on the basis of two lights. We have two lights, we have two junction boxes, we have one switch, we have my power and we have my ground. So I'm going to now again use junction boxes. Uh, and the reason I'm going to use them is because they are, oh, did you hear that? You know what that was? That was a, that was that. I told you, they come in loose and you flick them around and those little screws go everywhere. Okay, so I'm not going to cry. Basically, I'm going to use junction boxes because they are temporary, as I've already said. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both the black wires so that's down, so I need to open that one up, and I need to open, so I'm going to come from there, and I'm then going to put one wire into there, because I'm just basically extending these. Now, you would do these far more professionally, and you will do after you've tested it using junction boxes, you will then... You know, you will then go ahead and solder them and make a proper job of it and cover them in electrical tape so they don't get all, uh, all you know, don't get dirty and wet. So I'm going to take the black side of here. I've got one, see this? So I'm going to connect that one up. And then both of those wires will go into... So we're going to twist these wires up, and both those wires will go into a single junction box like this. Now you can see how this is going to go. All you're doing is extending. I've used short wires, but you use long wires when you do this. I shall just twist that up. You'll use long wires when you do this because you're going to make a far, far better job of it than I am. So I will just open that up slightly. Put those wires in, and then I will close that down. So basically that wire would be a lot longer. So one, one spotlight would be on one side of the bike, the other would be, and they would basically meet somewhere. So you're both there, extend it over, bum, straight into that. So I've got one connection coming into there. The next thing I want to do is take the blue wire, which I've already got. Here's one I prepared earlier. Have I got one with a connector on it? Yeah, I have. So let's use that one, and I'm going to, again, we're going to shorten these cables, because cabling is quite expensive. 
Cabling is quite expensive. And let me get back in the shot. Cabling is quite expensive. So I'm going to, connectors are quite expensive at all. So this, this demonstration is costing me money. So basically I'm going to then take these, I'm going to shorten this one in half, there you go. So I shall basically, now I could have left it ages ago, couldn't I? I could have just left it ages ago and uh, said this is how you do both of them and be done with it. But I'm not, I'm doing the whole hog so you can see from start to finish. And I'm going to take that off and take... Then off I've got a floor covered with electrical wire. There you go. So I should take that too. That's one side. That's the other side. That's one side. So let's start with this, shall we? Okay, so here's my light cable, and that is going to go into the red side of each of the connectors. There you go. It's signed to each of the connectors. So I'm using blue for the lights, remember? I use red for live, I'm using blue for the lights. And while this is supposed to be like the connector on the... Th I don't know what I'm saying at this point. So just ignore that. Just know that I'm using blue for the lights. Anything that comes out of a light is going to terminate by a blue wire. So again... I just put that in there, come on, in you go, in you go, that's it, in you go, let me just, that's probably a little bit too long to be honest, but for this, for this demonstration, it's going to be ample, you will make a better job of it, remember that, so, there's my blue wires. So my blue wires are connected, got my blue wires, and those blue wires are all going to terminate, you've guessed it, they're all going to terminate in the same block and therefore I have now extended from, I've gone into my exhaust system. Remember my exhaust system? I've done my four into two, which is basically all you've done. So you've basically added an extension from both and they should come up into a single junction point, which is this one. So twist those wires. And then I twist those wires badly, hopefully not too badly, take that out. I hate electrics, have I told you I hate electrics? I hate electrics, I'm not particularly good at it. But, you know what, one wire at a time, and I shall push that into there and that is then done and again there will be hundreds of you for thousands of you if any luck millions of you which will be watching this saying oh i'd have done it a different way and there's more than one way of skinning a cat but this is the way that i do it so basically they are two wires they are both the they are both the spotlights now connected into a single junction box once you've got to this point and you know everything works, you would permanently solder these and just tidy these up, shrink wrap them, electrical tape them. You would do whatever it needs, but you would do that. Once you've got this connection, you then need a... If I can cheat, I'm going to cheat at this point. Oh, go on, let me, let me cheat. Let me cheat. Let me cheat. Good. Good. Okay. So... We will now need a red cable. Am I right in thinking this, or am I just about to blow blow stuff up? I'm about to blow stuff up. So ignore me. Don't 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 follow me now. Right. Okay. So I now take a single blue connector. I've already gone through this, but I'll show you again. Single blue connector into the blue side. So that's taking a two to one. Again, that exhaust. Remember the exhaust. So, two to one from there. So I open that up. There's a reason this won't work. I don't know what that reason is. I haven't thought of it yet, but there's it. Two to one. So, that goes, that's from a four to a two, from a two to a one. And that is a one connector. 
and that goes into my middle switch lights. I then go from, now this one's slightly complicated because it's gone from a two to a two and it's actually going to come out as a two. So I need two black wires. I need two black wires. The first wire is going to go into my switch. The second wire is going to go into my let me have a second wire. Let me have a second black wire. Don't make don't make me have to make one. Have I got to make one? Oh, would you believe I've got to make one? Have I got to make one? I thought I had additional splat. Have I used them all? Have I cut them and used them all? <sighs> no, I haven't. I can use this one here. I'll tell you what, demonstrating this, I'm unplugging everything, which means I'm going to have to work out where... Right, okay, so I'm not going to complain. Don't complain. Right. So basically I then have a two black wires. So just to quick summarize, we have two blues, two blue wires that are coming from the reds on each of the spotlights. Make sense? Good. Two blacks coming from each of the spotlights. Make sense? Good. We then have a single connecting blue wire that comes from here to the uh, light switch on the uh, switch. Does that make sense? Yes. This is where it gets a little bit more complicated. We're then going to take two black wires, okay? One is for my ground Wago connection and the other one is to the light switch. Make sense? Yes. Good. So I am now going to connect those, twiddle those up together and I'm going to find my single junction box which is just there. And I am going to plug and second on, on camera. Everything off camera didn't happen. I'm going to undo that again, making sure. And let's just undo that a little bit more. doesn't look like it's all the way out. There you go. And I'm going to connect those two up. And I am going to squash that down. There you go. Right, two to one, two to one, two to one. One goes to a connector. One goes to a connector. Okay, I'll be out in ten minutes. One goes to a connector, one goes to the Wago connecting plug. Okay, so let's wrap this up in the next ten minutes because I've got to go out. Right, um, so there's my switch. So, the black one, does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yeah? Nice and neat, that one makes sense. Good. So these two end in there. So this black wire goes into the ground. This single wire goes into my connector that's connected to my frame. Does that make sense? So this wire here is connected to my frame. I lift that up. Second goes into there, if I twirl it a bit more, under pressure now to get this one wrapped up. Second one goes into there. Right, okay. So, that is the lights, that is the ground. I just need a single red connector, a single red connector, like this one here, to go from the live into the live, take that out into my live connector so this one connects to a a spare a spare wire or straight to the battery i'm not going to judge you whatever you want to do that one goes into there click that now the question is is this going to work and we're going to five four three two one Hey, it does. Okay, and the little LED light works. So that is basically connected. All you've done is extended. I hope that makes sense. That works. Both lights are on. One, two, boom, and off. Fantastic. Right. Okay, guys, that is it. I didn't go through the um, maker connector because um, you know how to do that. 
you don't need, but you do need a certain amount of tools. You will need some wire strippers. You will need a method of crushing the connector onto the wire. You do not need to have these, but these are bloody good. Um, you will need uh, wire and you will need uh, connectors. You know what you need. You've done that before, you can do this. This was more about wiring up a single spotlight to a switch and then wiring up two spotlights to a switch, proving they work. Then you go back, take it all apart, solder those wires together properly, build your extension, do a proper job, nice and neat, secure, and you then uh, and make sure it's weatherproof. Once that is done, you are golden. I hope that has been of a help. I hope that wasn't too confusing. I hate electrics, but as you can see, it's not that difficult if you just take your time. Hopefully that's helpful to you guys. You take it easy. Remember to like, remember to subscribe, and I shall see you for the next video. It'll be next week, and it potentially will be on this bike again. You take it easy. Bye-bye.